Hello everyone and welcome to this another episode of 2D Prototyping in Unity. My name is Kasanas. In the last episode we built ourselves a GUI. We actually gave ourselves the GUI right over here in the corner. You can see that allowed us to see when our player was hurt. Uh, and that is great. That's great. But if we actually start this game up, let's start it up right now and take a quick look here. Um, right now we've got ourselves a GUI up here and if we get hurt, boom, we can see it right away. We, we see our damage occur like that. But Still, if I fire my rocket, we don't know what level our enemy's damage is. And we really that's something that we really need to know as a player. So in today's episode, guys, I would like to add a new type of uh, GUI, uh, a, a world space GUI that's going to allow us to see the enemy health. All right, so let's get started. Okay, so the first thing I want to do, actually before we get onto the GUI, the first thing I want to do is add a, an effect to the creature's death, to our enemy's death. Right now nothing happens. If our character dies, we have a blood splurt, uh, which is great. I want something very, very similar to happen for our, for our enemies, alright? So we're going to add, in exactly the same way we did before, we're going to add a, an additional effect to the death of this character, alright, or death, death of this enemy. So what I want you guys to do is to open up your, well, no, here's what we're going to do first. Yeah, we're going to open up our enemy health script, all right, and mine's already open. Open up our enemy health script, and what we're going to do, exactly the same way we did with our player character, whenever this character dies, right here we destroy this game object, what I want to do is I want to instantiate, instantiate, uh, a new effect, a particle effect, all right, and we're going to call this one here, well, you know what, let's declare it first, let's go up here and say, uh, Let's make a public variable, and it's public so we can change it whenever we want, and it's going to be a game object, a game object, uh, and that's going to be our particle system, and let's call it um, enemy death fx. All right, that's probably perfectly fine. Enemy death fx. So what I want to do is I want to come down here and I want to instantiate, click right there, instantiate the enemy death effects. And where do I want to instantiate it? In our current location. So our transform, uh, little t transform, which never shows up and I don't know why. Transform. I really wish, even if I just typed it, if it just showed up. Let me see if I click over here. No. All right, good. Transform dot, and uh, we want it to be in this location, obviously, position uh, in the location we're at. We also want it to be in the transform transform little t dot oh, er, er, little t make sure you guys if it's doing that to you make sure you fix it each time uh, rotation all right so we are going to be making this thing in the current location and in with the current location that's all i want to do first thing i'm going to save this file save bam and let's go back and take a look at our spiky rock because now it's changed if we go down here and as long as everything is okay uh, we have our enemy health script right here, and we have enemy death effects none. And for now, I'm just going to dump in there our player death effects. All right. Uh, player death effects, is this you? Yeah, that's you. All right. I'm just going to. If that keeps happening, guys, if every time you click on something else, it switches over, you can use this little lock right here. And if the little lock's on, look, when I click here, nothing changes. That's a little tip. All right. Uh, make sure you turn that little lock off. Or if you find this is not changing, then make sure you turn this little lock off. Boop like that, and that allow you to switch back and forth. Now, that should be good. Now, one, two, two, boom, there's our explosion. I'm going to use the blood splatter for now. Uh, you guys can use whatever you want. You know, make yourself something more interesting than a blood splatter, because really, would a rock blood splatter? No, not unless it was a living creature. Hey, maybe it is. Anyway, so that was the first thing I wanted to do. The next thing I want to do is create a is create a, a health bar that's on top of this guy here to tell us how close he is to his death. Okay, so adding the, the enemy, uh, enemy visual representation of their health is not any more difficult than adding, than adding it to the character was. In fact, we're going to follow a lot of the same steps. We are going to make a couple of small changes, however, and we'll see those right now. The first thing I want to do, bam, I want to come in here and I want to say create, and I want to create my new canvas. I'm creating a new canvas simply because, uh, simply because we don't want to use the same the same canvas. We're, we're changing some of the attributes of this canvas. We're giving it very specific details. If I was simply adding another picture on the screen, let's say I decided that instead of adding a, I'm, I want to make a floating bar over top of each enemy, but let's say instead of a floating bar, I said, every time uh, I have an enemy contact, I want to put the image up here. 
Let's say I did it like that instead. I could use the old canvas and I could just add, uh, add some more information to the old canvas. In this situation though, we don't. We wanna have a floating bar right over top of the enemy so that when the character shoots that enemy, uh, it automatically affects that, uh, that health, all right? And we can see it right over top of the enemy. We say, yep, yeah, that's the enemy we're shooting at right now. So I'm gonna add this new canvas and let's immediately change its name to uh, enemy health canvas, all right? Great. A couple of things we want to do down here. We want to make sure, go down to the canvas, uh, the canvas component, find the render mode, and I want to change it. So before we had screen space, screen space overlay, which means put it on the screen. In this situation, we don't want that. We want this thing here to be in world space. Now watch what happens. Watch what happens to this rect transform when I change it over. Bam. As soon as I change it over, I have access to the rect transform, and I can actually physically move this object around. And I'm gonna. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it at zero, 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 and I'm gonna change its height and width to, let's say, it doesn't really matter, uh, eight and eight. All right, so we're gonna have a much smaller canvas, and we can see it right here, this white square around there. That might even be too big. We can even make it five by five. But this doesn't really matter, to be honest. It doesn't really matter. Five by five, great. Now. Uh, world space, everything looks good. At zero, zero, that's where we want it, perfect. We're basically trying to make ourselves a, a new prefab here that we're gonna add to all of our characters. Now, the next thing I wanna do is I want to uh, add a new component. Uh, we actually wanna add a canvas group, and once again, guys, if you come in here and it, whoops, uh, it come in here and it looks like this, and you're like, oh, I can't find canvas group, it's, is it under UI? I don't know, I don't see it. Uh, you wanna come over here and you wanna start typing can, and the more you type, obviously, the more you're going to get. I want a new canvas group. Boom. Right there. This is exactly the same steps we took last time. All right. So again, the canvas group is not interactable, and I don't want it to block raycasts. All right. That's the only thing I'm going to change. Now, I want to start adding components to this. And the only thing I really want to happen is, is I want to have a bar go on top of our enemy. That's it. So just like the last time, how come I didn't rename it? Let's try renaming it again. So I didn't hit return after, did I? Enemy health canvas, bam. All right, so uh, what I wanna do is I wanna add a bar, and we already know how to do this. Create, go to UI, and find ourselves the scroll bar. Slider, scroll bar? Slider, <laughs> not scroll bar, slider, sorry. Uh, we wanna add ourselves the slider. Now it comes in, it's huge, look how big it is. That's the biggest slider I've ever seen in my life. We don't want it that big. Um, first thing, let's put it at zero, zero, zero. It's gonna be popped on top of our canvas, it's already in there. Uh, and let's just change this to uh, 10 and one. All right, this is still gonna be too big. All right, let's zoom in there and take a look. That is still gonna be too big. Actually, let's, let's, let's put it back to 100, 100, and let's put this at 10. So it is about 10% of the size, uh, width and height. Instead of changing it by changing the width and height, because you saw how it got stretched out and skinny there, I'm actually gonna make changes to the scale. I'm gonna come in here and let's change the scale to, I don't know, decimal zero three. And let's put this to decimal zero three. Now I don't want it to be exactly the same. Let's zoom in and take a look at it, focus. Uh, that's not so bad. It's a little bit skinny, so let's make it a little taller. Uh, let's try decimal zero five. All right, that looks better to me. Uh, and that's approximately the right size, actually. I kind of like that. That's gonna be exactly where I want it on top of this guy here. Uh, now, uh, I think I'm gonna physically move this up a little tiny bit. So it's kind of at the top of our screen, right up there at the top of our menu. And the next thing I wanna do is I'm gonna dump the stuff we didn't use last time. Remember, we got rid of a lot of different things. We did not use this thing at all, bam. We did not use the background at all, bam. We only kept the fill area and that's all I wanna do again. Just keep the fill area. And once again, let's change it to our green, which we just had a solid green, I think. So let's just move this down. No red, oops, no red and no blue. All right, I think that's the same green we used and that's perfect. All right, so that's all I want to do. Let's rename our slider to something else. Let's rename our slider to uh, enemy health. Oops, I'm putting gelf. Enemy health slider. Perfect, all right, so with that being done and with our canvas being done, uh, I like the way this all looks. Everything is centered, everything is the way I like it. I think this is ready to be a prefab. So the first thing I'm gonna do, oops, did I turn this off? Color tint, 
none. Make sure you do that. We don't want any color tint on this guy. All right. The last thing we want to do is make this thing into a prefab. I'm just going to drag it and drop it in here in my prefabs. All right. And that is going to give me a brand spanking new uh, enemy health prefab right here. Great. Now, oh, I didn't want to do that. I lied. Not the enemy health slider. You want to grab it right here, the enemy health canvas. Drag that and drop it there. Bam. Enemy health canvas is what I want to drag. All right. So that is over here. Perfect. I'm also going to take this thing here. I'm going to find my spiky rock and I'm going to add it to there. Bam. So now I've got myself under spiky rock. I've got myself this additional enemy health canvas and I'm going to physically move my enemy health canvas to exactly where I like it on this rock. Let's lay right there and right there. That looks pretty good. That looks about where I want it. All right. With that done, all we have to do now is write the code to show the effects on our slider. So once again, let's open up our, boop, let's open up our enemy health uh, script because we're going to make the changes right in the enemy health script. Anything to do with health is obviously going to go in here. So there's a couple things we need to do. First of all, exactly like we did with the other character, we are going to make sure that we have a public reference, uh, and I'll just add it right below here, a public reference uh, to our slider. Uh, and before we do, we have to make sure, just like the last time, we want to make sure we are using Unity uh, Engine dot UI. Oops, UI. Perfect. Once again, by including that, that allows us to have access to the all the functionality underneath uh, underneath the uh, Unity Engine UI. All right, so you have to make sure you add that to the top right away. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a public game object that's going to be a slider. Now, of course, slider is part of the uh, yeah, UI. So slider, and let's call this thing here. Um, I don't know. Let's call this. Uh, I don't know. Uh, enemy slider. <laughs> I am not coming up with some genius names today, am I? All right. And this is basically going to be the making it public like that is obviously going to make it so that we can drag and drop something in there. And that's exactly what we want to do. Let's call it enemy health slider. I guess it's fine. Enemy health slider is fine. All right. Now we want to affect the enemy health slider. Uh, so what we want to do first of all is make sure we set it appropriately. So in our start, right here in our start function. We're going to come in here and we're going to add a couple of things. Uh, we're going to set our current health to enemy max health. That's great. We're going to set enemy uh, slider dot max value equal to current health. Uh, and we're going to do that. We could have set it to enemy max health. It doesn't really matter. Choose one of those. They should be identical now. So that's the first thing we're going to do. We're also going to set the value, the actual value of the enemy slider dot value equal to current health. All right. So right now we've got ourselves completely in the green and our enemy itself. Everything is perfectly fine. Great. The next thing we want to do is we want to affect it every time we uh, shoot at this thing. And we've already got that right here. We have our add damage. All right. And our add damage is where we're going to actually make the, the changes. So the first thing we're going to do come into here and we're going to add a couple of lines. Actually, we can just do it right above if you want. It doesn't really. No, nope, we want to do it right below this after we've added the damage. Uh, we're going to add a couple of lines. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to say the current no, we're just we're going to enemy slider dot value is equal to our current health. Perfect. And basically all that's going to do is it's going to affect uh, affect our actual image. All right. Let's save this off. File save. Uh, let's close this off for now. And if everything has been done right, when we come down here, we're going to see uh, we're going to see in our spiky rock under our enemy uh, health right here. We're going to see this new thing. All right, this enemy slider. And what we're going to do is we're going to drag our slider, not the canvas. We're going to drag our slider and we're going to drop it right there. Now, when I say play. Beep, boop. We can fire and we can see that it's immediately having an effect. That's exactly what we wanted to do. There's only one last thing that I would like to do in this episode and, and 
And what I don't like, you can look down here on the screen, if we had a bunch of enemies on the screen and they all have their green sliders up right away, the screen is going to look cluttered and everything else. So I want to set it up so that this object doesn't actually appear, the slider doesn't actually appear until the first time that we actually shoot the enemy, okay? So it's very, very easy to do. All we're going to have to do is, let's go over here and we'll take a look at our enemy health slider, or actually any of these things. Let's take a look at the canvas itself. If we take a look at the canvas itself, um, we can see that right next to the name of the canvas, enemy health canvas, is this little tiny check mark. And that's true of everything. Enemy health slider, little tiny check mark. Fill area, little tiny check mark. All right, what we want to do basically with our enemy health slider selected, I want to turn this off. Bam. When I turn off that little tiny check mark, it disappears, all right? If I turn it back on, boop, it appears again. So basically we want to do that in code, and it's very easy to do, all right? So with the enemy health slider status set to inactive, so I'm turning it off, I'm going to open up uh, my enemy health script again, and I am going to find uh, this area right here, my add damage. Now what I basically want to do is each time that uh, each time that I damage this character, I'm going to make sure that the act that the status of my slider is set to uh, is set to uh, on. All right, is set to active. Really easy to do. We've already got a name up here. It's called enemy slider, and I want to take the enemy slider and I want to set the game object dot game object because uh, that's what we're looking at, the actual game object, the status of the game object. We're going to say dot set active, and we're going to give this a value of either true or false. In our case, obviously, we want it to be, oops, we want it to be true. All right, so that means, basically, the first time that we come in and we add damage, we're going to turn that little check mark back on. All right, let's save this, file save. And if I go in here and I say play, all right, there's my guy, there's my thing right there. You can see there's no status bar. And when I fire, bam, my status bar appears. Now, I guess that means that you're not gonna actually physically see the very, very first time when you hit it. It's just gonna be some, some shorter version of it. Uh, so it's gonna be up to you guys to decide if you wanna add that line or not. I added it because I didn't wanna see all the clutter on the screen. If you don't want it, leave it off. It doesn't, not gonna affect the code in any way. All right, guys, that is our light. That's the last of our GUI. I don't think we're going to add any more GUI. Uh, you you know you can go through and you can pretty much add anything you want using these techniques, uh, either the the um, the screen overlay or with this global technique you can add you know health bars or damage bars or anything you want to anything. All right, guys. So I hope you enjoyed that episode and I hope your guy, your game is coming along really well. I'm really looking forward to seeing how you guys are doing. Make sure you're asking questions down below if you've got them. I'm trying to teach you guys how to do this. It's not for me. This is absolutely for you guys out there. Uh, I want to make sure that if you have any questions, you ask them, and I will do my absolute best to answer them for you. All right, guys? I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, let me know with a thumbs up. A thumbs down is perfectly fine. All right? I'm not so worried. Thumbs up, thumbs down, comments down below, and if you haven't done so, please take a few seconds to subscribe. Have yourselves a wonderful day, everyone.